In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. The Saturn IV Ultra is a MSLA or resin printer with a 12K mono LCD screen. This was supplied to me free of charge for review purposes. But that being said, all opinions are my own. I'm James and you're watching LPJ Models. 3D printers these days tend to have a product cycle of around a year. Last year's model, the Saturn III, was released in May of 2023. And now, halfway through April 2024, we're seeing the release of the Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra. Elegoo have been fairly tight-lipped about this release, but there was some information leaked and some speculation on Reddit a few months ago, which has led to some speculation and discussion as to what features this printer might have. And the features is where we're going to start this review. The Saturn IV Ultra has a few specifications similar to the Saturn III Ultra, but also a few new ones. The first new feature is auto leveling. Elegoo are saying this is a plug and play machine, but not only will the printer be easier to set up, but in theory, the auto leveling function should reduce print fail rates. Next up is the addition of an AI camera. According to the spec sheet, this allows for real time monitoring, empty build plate detection, warp detection, and the ability to make a time-lapse video, like this one I made earlier. The camera runs at a resolution of 720p and also runs at quite a high ISO. This is to eliminate the need of any extra lighting inside the print enclosure. The next new feature is a tilt-release system. This means the entire vat and screen pull away from the bill plate at an angle, which means you can still use PFA film as the ACF film usually used for fast printing can reduce the quality of some prints, so this is a good move. The build plate also has a mechanical sensor. As well as helping to facilitate the auto leveling, it's supposed to detect the level of the resin, sending you an alert to the printer if you're running out, and also to detect residue. I'm not entirely sure what this means, but from the marketing image I found, and I reckon that's something to do with if the build plate detects any small pieces of resin floating in the vat or prints that have become detached from the build plate. In theory, stopping the print and protecting the FEP film from any damage and the other mechanical elements. And finally for this section, the Saturn IV Ultra has the ability to resume printing after a power outage. That's really useful. The screen is marketed as a 12K mono LCD screen, which is no change from the Saturn III of last year. It is still a pretty hefty resolution, with an excellent pixel size of 19 by 24 microns. Although we haven't seen any change here, I do believe we're on the cusp of diminishing returns when it comes to increase in screen resolution. One area where some of you may be disappointed is the build volume. Both the Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra have the same build volume, and this is smaller than that of the Saturn III. As I personally print smaller items, build volume isn't something I've ever had a problem with, but it is sad to see a specification regress. And there's one feature I almost forgot to include, the Saturn IV series come with quite a cool flippy lid. Before we move on to print quality, let's take a look at what's inside the box. Because the printer itself is quite chunky, measuring in at around 32 by 32 by 55 centimeters, the box is understandably pretty big. So I had to borrow somebody's house and their dog just to unbox this thing. The printer came with enough packaging to make sure it was safe during transit. The printer was bagged and taped and the interior was crammed with foam, again to make sure nothing was damaged in transit. Secreted among the foam was the build plate, while both accessory boxes were in the main cardboard box. There are of course a few screen protectors you'll need to remove before you can start printing. Let's take a close look at the printer before we move on to anything else. The build plate is attached by a fairly simple clamp system. It's nice to see that the mechanism for the stepper motor is also protected by rails. This will help increase stability. The resin vat is secured in place with two bolts and the AI camera sits to the upper right of the resin vat. The two z axis rails have also been nicely greased from the factory. The IO panel is on the right hand side towards the rear of the printer. This consists of a DC or power in, on off switch, USB port and a port to attach a Wi-Fi aerial. Everything is controlled from the touchscreen on the front of the printer. This is really easy to use and navigate. There's a temperature gauge at the upper left 
and this monitors the temperature of the LCD screen to make sure it doesn't get too hot. My printer came with a very slightly dented back panel. When testing the backlight, to me the light looked even and the text was really nice and crisp. Oh, the camera also comes with a small dust cap to protect it, so don't forget to take this off. The Saturn 4 and the Saturn 4 Ultra also come with an accessory pack, which is pretty much identical to the one I got in my Mars 2 Pro. Inside this is a memory stick, a sharp, and I mean really sharp, scraper. This is to help remove parts off of the build plate. A smaller plastic scraper. This is for scraping parts out of the resin vat if they remain stuck behind. Some trendy gloves. Don't forget your PPE is no laughing matter when it comes to resin printing. We've got the manual, it's fairly straightforward. We've also got some spare nuts and bolts and some Allen keys. There's also some filters for helping you to decant your resin back into your bottle. And some face masks. Oh, this here is the aerial for the Wi-Fi. The small round thing is the camera cap. Also supplied is a vacform drip tray. This is to slot onto the printer before removing your build plate. Because the screen and the resin vat move, there is understandably a gap around them which could be a recipe for disaster if you get any resin down the cracks. So this is Elegoo's solution. And because of the design of the build plate being a kind of two-tiered system, more excess resin than normal tends to get caught on the upper face of the build plate proper. I also thought that this would make the build plate harder to clean, but I just used an old toothbrush to get between the two faces. Oh, and finally, a power brick and adapter was supplied, but I didn't film it to save time. Now, you and I are both dying to see the print quality of this machine, but before we get there, let's take a quick look at the software. Originally bundled on the memory stick with the printer was a version of old Chitterbox, but after a few days, I was given a link to download Chitterbox 2.0 with updated profiles for the Saturn IV Ultra. The new version of Chitterbox is a nice upgrade on the old one and retains most of the original version's features. A quick note, on the visualization of the build plate, the side that says front is actually facing the camera. Setting up prints is fairly simple. Just drag and drop the parts you want onto the build plate. You can then rotate, scale and move them as you'd expect. Hollowing and the ability to dig holes is supplied as standard too, which can help you to save resin and reduce the suction force on the build plate in the FEP film. Adding supports is as simple as before, but the interface is slightly different. Auto supports work pretty well and are logical and fairly non-intrusive. And of course, adding manual supports is still an option. The Saturn IV Ultra comes with a fast printing and a normal speed printing setting. Now this speed change is done entirely on the printer side of things, so it's nothing to do with the slicer. You just have to swap between them on the menu on the printer touchscreen. To access the printer over the network, you'll need to install Chitter Manager, which is a plugin for Chitterbox. You can then access this on the upper right of the screen on Chitterbox. This gives you live status of the printer, with access to onboard files, a print history, and the real-time viewing and ability to make a time-lapse with the AI camera. There are also some statistics on display, including the projected life of your release film, and a section that tells you for how long your screen has been printing. The option to view the camera at any time when the printer is on is a great feature. Right now, nothing's printing as I just removed the door to show off the drip tray, but it gives you an idea. The printer has an onboard memory, so you can download files to the printer and do everything completely remotely. And because the reliability of some memory sticks has been called into question, this might be a good alternative. Anyway, that's a rough outline of the software. Let's take a look at how my prints came out. For a brand new top of the line printer, you'd expect the print quality to be really good. And it is. So first we're gonna look at the difference between fast and slow printing. Let's start off with these two 135 scale Russian World War II snipers. On the left hand side we have a Russian sniper that has been printed slowly or at irregular speed. And on the right hand side we have a Russian sniper that has been printed with the fast setting. Let's take a look at how they stack up against each other. Both of these figures were printed with a layer height of 0.01 millimeters. A quick note, this is before I realized that the Z axis accuracy caps out at 0.02. Anyway, the slow print took 9 hours, 57 minutes and 40 seconds, while the fast print took 8 hours, 7 minutes and 12 seconds. That's just under a 2 hour time difference for a print that's under 5 centimeters tall. 
Now, if you are less fussy than myself and like to print at 0.3 or 0.5, you'll see your print times drastically reduce even more than you're used to. But does this affect the detail? Let's have a look. Again, on the left, we have the slow printing and on the right, we have the fast setting. Taking a closer look at the slow printed figure, the details are really fine. You can't see any layer lines and because of the screen resolution, any pixelation is really hard to see. Everything is really nicely rendered. With the figure that has been fast printed, there is a very slight drop off in quality. Ultra fine details like the shoulder strap haven't rendered quite as well, but these details are really fine. And I feel almost like I'm nitpicking because this is quite a stress test for the printer. On the back of the cape, there's almost no difference in print quality between the two. So for less detailed or larger areas, I mean, if you're gonna print this figure in 116, I don't think the difference in print quality will matter too much. The same is reflected in the trousers. Both fast and slow trousers and boots have come out really nicely. For the heads on the figures, fast at the top, slow at the bottom, I don't really see any difference here. The fast printing setting seems to work really well. There's minimal detail loss and you'll be saving yourself some time on your prints. Overall, I think the fast printing feature is excellent. I'm all for saving time because I'm really impatient, especially when it comes to big prints. So I think I'm gonna be using that quite a lot in the future. Both of these goblins were printed with a 0.02 layer height using the fast setting on the printer. Flesh of Gods are usually really good with their surface textures and none of these have been lost with the fast setting on the printer. Everything is nice and crisp and you can see all the textures clearly. Most impressive. And to boot, this print only took six hours and eight minutes. This print, probably the longest during my two weeks of testing this printer, is the same Russian sniper we saw earlier, but in 1 16th scale. This took just under 20 hours to print on the slow setting. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed. Both with this and the Goblin, I mean the small stuff is good, but the bigger stuff really gives you scope to appreciate the detail that this printer can do. Of course with a printer like this, the outcome is only going to be as good as the STL files you get, but if you've got some good ones, like some really nice ones, the results are going to be epic. One thing that sadly hasn't been solved by all this new technology is the warping of thin, long items. I know this door prints well flat or vertical, and I also know it's a pain to print at an angle. And sadly, I did get the same warping as on my Anacubic Mono X6K. Better orientation will save this, but I just wanted to see if anything had changed. So, the Saturn IV Ultra. Is it any good? And how much does it cost? Well, the pre-order price is 399 US dollars as of the 15th of April, 2024. And according to a comment on the official Elegoo Facebook page, the MSRP may vary a little. So if you're watching this video a little later, head over to the Elegoo website to see the current price. That being said, for a printer with these specs, the price is fantastic. And although this review isn't covering the Saturn IV standard version, I just mentioned the price for that one starts at 299 US dollars. So what are the bad things about this printer? Many people were hoping for this gen of Elegoo printers to have an onboard heater. Resin can be quite touchy and it really is temperature sensitive. And although Elegoo have said on their Facebook that a heater is on its way, I know that this will put some people off. But I think with the projected rough price of the unit, an extra $50 isn't going to break the bank, especially considering all the features you do get with the Saturn IV Ultra. These features like the AI camera and the resume function are going to be pretty useful to most people. These features alongside the mechanical sensor should go away to making sure your prints are successful. And the fact that you don't have to level the build plate does make this a pretty plug and play machine. Overall, I think this printer is pretty fantastic. It has loads of features that you'd expect from a printer with a much higher price bracket. So it is a bit of a bargain, relatively of course, a 3D printer is not a cheap investment. But I think most importantly, this printer will help to make printing more accessible to more people. A more streamlined approach to printing will draw in even the most hesitant of prospective printers. That was a mouthful. And it's a great sign that these technologies are becoming more affordable. It means hobbyists like you or I can get a printer packed with features for a reasonable price. Last up, I'd like to thank Elegoo for sending this printer for me to review. And I hope you as the viewer have found this review fair and informative. I think reviews are really important, so I do try my best to be as thorough as I can. And of course, these videos would not be possible without the support of my patrons. Thank you for your support, I do appreciate it.
And on that note, I'm going to do some printing. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.